In our previous video, Recording Bass Guitar Part 2, we experimented with three different microphones. In this video, we'll introduce direct input boxes, or DIs, and show you how to time align your tracks. An alternative to miking the bass cabinet is to use a DI, or direct input box. The signal coming out of the bass guitar does not really have enough voltage to drive a line level input, and has a bit too much voltage for a mic level input. It also requires a different cable than your studio microphones. So the DI converts the instrument level from the bass into a microphone level signal that can be plugged into any mic input without distorting. The DI box also has a through connector that allows the direct signal from the bass to be passed through to the amp. The DI allows you to record the bass direct without even using an amp. That way your bass can be silent in the studio but audible in the headphones. This also means that the sound from other instruments will not leak into your bass track. On your DI, you might also find switches to reduce the output level and lift the ground to get rid of hum. Let's compare two popular DI boxes, the DBX DB12 and the Radial Pro DI. The DBX is an active direct box, which means that it uses an active electronic circuit to perform the signal conversion. Active direct boxes require an internal battery, a wall wart power supply, or 48 volt phantom power to operate. The Radial Pro DI is a passive direct box, which means that it uses a transformer to convert an instrument level signal to a mic level signal without the need for any power source. Let's compare the sound of these two direct boxes. These two devices sound a bit different, as do all audio devices. The difference between this passive and this active DI is not indicative of all passive or all active DIs. Let's hear what it sounds like if we record the bass using a DI and a microphone simultaneously and mix the two signals together. Here is the sound of our DI track. And here is the sound of our microphone track. We tried different blends of the mic and the DI and came up with some interesting combinations. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? The DI picks up sound from the bass instantaneously, but it takes a little time for the sound from the speaker to travel through the air to the microphone. You can see this by looking at the waveforms. Notice how the microphone track lags behind the DI track. This results in a difference in phase between the tracks at certain frequencies. For instance, at this point, the microphone track is trying to push the playback speaker cone towards you, while the DI track is trying to pull it away from you. This can change the tone of your blended tracks. Here is the sound of these two tracks as recorded. Let's slide the DI track to the right so that the two signals are aligned in time. We have now effectively delayed the DI track by about two thousandths of a second which lines up the waveforms, but is not enough of a delay to change the groove. Now that the tracks are lined up, let's see what they sound like. Now let's switch back and forth between the time-aligned sound and the original sound for comparison.
Once the tracks are aligned, we hear a fuller sound with more low end. The sound also does not tend to change as much as the bassist changes register. But the original sound was good too, reminiscent of the kind of scooped mid-range sound you can hear on many great recordings from the 80s. We recommend you try this technique and decide for yourself which approach you prefer. It is also possible to time align your audio using delay plugins instead of manually moving the track. In our next video, Recording Bass Guitar Part 4, we will demonstrate blending multiple microphones and DIs and introduce a technique called reamping.